three, two, one. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another exciting episode here on Inside Movies Galore. I am one of your hosts, but uh, tonight we are continuing to celebrate our five years of being here online, and uh, uh, our good friend Dustin uh, has brought us another movie this w uh, week, so why don't you tell us uh, what movie uh, we uh, you had us discuss this week? So, well, as you can maybe see from the graphic, so this week I picked the 1998 or 1999, depend, seems to depend on which source you use, uh, Japanese classic Ringu, which was later remade into The Ring, and which I feel like most people would know is about a cursed videotape where you die after seven days. Uh, after you've seen it. And it's a... Well, I guess this is a slight spoiler, but the only way to get out of the curse is to copy the tape and show it to somebody else. Uh, it's been Ringu has been kind of around in popular culture long enough. I think people probably know that already. Uh, but uh, the the bulk of the movie is actually like a crime is actually like a murder mystery like investigation. Like that somebody's like our main characters see the tape and then try to figure out well where did the tape come from? Like how do we break the curse? And they ended up uh, well finding. Oh, solving a disappearance. So, but I'm kind of getting ahead of myself, really. Uh, so, I first saw this um, today. <laughs> so, a uh, little bit of background. Oh. I, play, uh, I play a game called Dead by... I've never seen The Ring before, either, actually. Uh, like, people who know me know I play a lot of this game called Dead by Daylight. And uh, Sadako, the... You know, vengeful ghost of Ringu uh, was added in March as a playable character. And when they announced Sadako, I actually went out and I bought the Arrow Blu-ray set. And it took a couple of weeks, but I did find the uh, U.S. the American remakes, so I could watch those. And then they've just been on my table. Like I haven't, uh, I hadn't been able to find the time to really sit down and watch them. Because it's something that I wanted to be able to sit down and pay full attention to. And just the opportunity never really came along up until I made, uh, well, I set aside a lot of my day today to check it out. And it was, wow. So this was the kind of thing where I wish we hadn't been planning a discussion on it, like, so soon after because I just wanted to like watch all of them like right away afterward. Like this was so much better than I expected it to be. Uh, nice. Like I, I thought it was going to be good. Like it had very high reviews and acclaim and was always spoken of positively. I didn't know how good it was really going to be. Uh, and as kind of a funny aside, so all of uh, Sadako's items in the game suddenly make like perfect sense. It's like, oh, that's where that's from. Oh, this, that's where this is from. It's like, no, oh, I have that. And, like, and it's pretty cool. You haven't seen the American remakes yet either, have you? I just said I had not. Okay. So I know they changed her name to Samara, which, uh, you know, Sadako probably wouldn't make a whole lot of sense in. Well, Maybe it would, but I think you get what I'm trying to say. Like at, they this point, they it. at this point, I think the name has made its mark here, but at the time, maybe not. Still would be a pretty weird name for a kid uh, in the States. I gave my kid a Japanese name, and mostly she gets good reactions for it, but it's also pretty streamlined compared to some of them. So uh, I'm sure you being a white kid with a name like Sadako, uh, you're going to get a lot of weeb jokes whether you like anime or not through school, I think. Uh, so better they didn't. Samara's a good choice. <laughs> yeah, actually, uh, I, I have a friend who is like really familiar with the ring, and I was like, yeah, they're they're doing a ring chapter for uh, Dead by Daylight, like off the original Japanese novel, because this was a novel first. 
And he was like, they're adding Samara? It's like, no, Sadako. I was like, oh. He's like, what do you mean, oh? <laughs> like, shouldn't you be excited still, too? <laughs> uh, so I, I guess there's a whole lot of interesting things that uh, if we were more prepared, we could discuss between the Americanized and the original versions. But anyway, uh, this movie is pretty awesome. Uh, I really enjoyed it. So I, I'm happy I saw it, and I can't wait to see it again and get the rest of the story from... Uh, because the arrow set of this comes with ring two and ring zero which and also I ross and gone i think uh there's Gun a fourth one on there. it's ross like actually four movies is that on one of is that on one of the other discs yeah, it's like hidden on there kind of like they did with uh that godzilla movie on the godzilla set so yeah. it's actually yeah. four movies in the arrow set but it says it's only three that's the same one that i have yeah, it's basically a repackaging of the original four movies set on DVD, uh, except with a lot of extras. Yeah, no so shit I, I think you'll yeah. definitely love that I might shit want movie. that. It's worth it, Jake. It's a pretty little set, too. Um, even the basic edition. That's rad, though, Dustin, that you found out. You basically got turned on to it from a video game, and it started as a novel, so those what couldn't be more polar opposites. You know? And he's starting uh, out with the original. They did, uh, so they did, it, uh, part of you. did a pretty. Uh, they did a pretty cool thing with uh, the video with the Dead by Daylight chapter too. Like it's meant to actually be a sequel in uh, some ways. Those Dead by Daylight folks seem to take a lot of care in what they're doing over there with the the horror franchises they end up having access to. It's it's kind of <laughs> insane the uh, how high quality it seems, honestly, in terms of just the treatment of it. It, um, it seems to really depend who's who's doing it, because uh, there are some things like uh, I uh, I occasionally hang out in the stream for one of the developers, like one of like the really high ranking like project lead developers. And he said things like Clive Barker couldn't write and Halloween is a bad movie but has some good moments. Like that's yeah, everyone has bad takes. <laughs> I personally agree with him on Halloween. Uh... Well, he thinks he thinks Aliens is one of the worst movies ever made, which is just psychotic. That's stupid. Yeah. Which one? Aliens. Well, I hated it with a passion for many years, but I've I've learned the error of my ways, but still. All right. Yes. You off. accept how wrong you are, Jacob. And that's what <laughs> makes you salvageable. <laughs> and Dustin, you'll be happy to know I did make time to watch that uh, DVD trailer where they recreated the video. That was pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. Like uh, when, when Dead by Daylight brought, uh, apparently Dead by Daylight is very popular in Japan and some Asian countries. And so it sounds like she actually sold spectacularly well there, even though she was kind of less well received here. Yeah. And uh, one thing they did is they, they made like a special trailer. So featuring uh, Yoichi, like the shot, the like five year old in this movie, like as an adult, is now investigating the tape in the Dead Lady Light story and encounters Sadako at the cabin. And they also made a second like little video. Because when you load up the game, the most recent trailer for whichever new like chapter plays. Uh, and so the first time you loaded up the game after Sadako came out, you got that trailer showing like Yoichi like going to the cabin and like having the tape come on and Samara come out of the TV, which is, you know, I guess again a spoiler, but you you know. Uh and then the second time you booted up the game after that, it would actually play a video game rendered in Dead by Daylight, like art style version of Sadako's tape. Yeah. So you would load up the game and the tape would start, and it was actually pretty cool. That is super so, cool. I mean, that's, uh, that all ties into my first impressions of Ring and Ringu. And I, I didn't even read the descriptions of like what items were because I didn't want them to be spoiled for me. So today I actually got to finally go through and like read all the stuff that they put into the game. They put some cool mm. stuff in the movie too, which me and Dave will talk about at some point later. Uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, I guess that's the end of my first impression, which was just overwhelmingly positive in every way. So uh, cool. you want to go next, Mo? Oh, sure. Uh, I saw the Ring movie, like the was it Sarah, Sarah Michelle Geller was in it. Buffy. No, that was the Grudge. The Ring that was, was the one with Naomi Watts. 
yeah, I probably saw them pretty much back to back with like this. They were big at the same time. At, the, at the, the, the time, you know, and like she wanted to watch scary movies and she rented these and I was obliged to fucking pretend that it was cool because I wanted to get laid. Uh, I'm a slasher kid, so this stuff never appealed to me. Uh, it's just not my shit. For some reason, though, when I got this ring set and finally like I got it out of more morbid curiosity to be like, all right. I really didn't like the American shit that I was seeing. So maybe like these could be pretty fucking rad. And I was not disappointed. I love this first ring movie so much for some reason. There's just some slow creeping dread about it. But uh, every time that I watch it, it's like, that's disgusting. I love this, you know, and then it culminates with them fishing like a gross corpse out of a well. I mean, it's the perfect way to spend a Sunday afternoon. (laughs) Uh, and it just absolutely destroys the American one to me because the American one doesn't manage to develop that same believable sense of like this urban legend curse thing, you know, sort of migrating into the world of mass media. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, definitely. Uh that's kind of another thing I forgot to mention too. Like normally I don't, uh, I don't normally like uh, foreign horror films really from anywhere. And so I was even further blown away that I enjoyed this so much. Yeah. I love mm-hmm. foreign horror. Don't get, I mean, I love like there's a lot of it that I absolutely love, but just supernatural horror as a rule is usually not my forte. You know, no, I don't dig a lot of ghost movies. Uh, the Changeling, which actually might have been one you suggested as well, Dustin, is one of the uh, that was like a life changing event for me on this show because I was like, "Holy shit, <laughs> these guys found a movie that's not, you know, House on Haunted Hill or Thirteen Ghosts that I actually like." You know, yeah, um, I, uh, the first time I saw Changeling on the last drive-in with Joe Bob, like I'd never seen it or heard of it before. And so I was like standing up out of my chair, like, oh my God, like it actually scared me, which dude, yeah. Pretty much and that's happened. what I'm saying. It's got a similar but different brand of that same slow creeping dread that's in Ringy, you know. This movie doesn't it doesn't show you a bunch of disgusting stuff right out the gate or anything. And really the only disgusting scene is at the end when they finally find the corpse. Right. There's like a gross feeling of like heavy dread on this movie when you watch it like it almost feels like the movie's cursed it sounds cheesy but it, it really does like it's like damn yeah. you know like this they, they managed to like impart that whole attitude into the, the way the movie just feels to watch it uh well, and apparently... you know, right from the first frames of it when those girls are talking you know something's bad bad's gonna happen right it just because like, of the way there's there's nothing like really tangible about the scene that sets it up to be that, but the tone of it when they start talking, you know that this conversation is going to lead to something tragic, kind of a thing. You know that uh, actually I don't know that how you idea. Achieve that. Go ahead, Jake. Sorry, I was going to say that idea actually played into the marketing. I was amused by this blurb that the 2001 UK release included a disclaimer that they accept no responsibility for any injuries or fatalities that may occur during or after the viewing of this video cassette. <laughs> I love that. And, and not great. only is that a great marketing thing, but it's also kind of I, almost warranted. I would. Think, I hope they know, include like, that on the arrow release because that just seems gr- like a great addition. I don't know if they do. There does seem to be an isolated um, clip of Sadako's tape. But man, it's just, it's a very special little movie, you know, and I like it so much that despite the urge to do it, I have not watched the sequels, which is very weird for me. But I think it's just, I was so surprised that I liked this movie as much as I did that I'm like so nervous to spoil it. So I, even though I have the set, I've only ever watched Ring You like five times, you know, I, even prior to this. So this oh. was my sixth time watching Ring You. Wow. For this discussion. Like, I, I genuinely do like the movie that much. Uh, but you haven't seen the sequels even once? No, man. I keep resisting it. And part of huh. it also, you know, 
not not to play this up like I have impossible willpower. I also don't own all the sequels yet. So uh, maybe what? that day that I do, I'll be like, all right, it's time. You know. Well, I thought buy, you like, said you had the Arrow release. The well, Arrow release doesn't have all of them though. There's like it has, no. Movies. There are at least thirteen to fourteen other. Oh, jeez. Well, yeah, that's that nuts, Jake. Have followed. <laughs> I didn't know there were that many. What you get yeah. with the ring you set from Arrow is basically like the origin series. The first four? Yeah. yeah. Well, and this isn't even the first adaptation of the ring either. So, uh, so uh, and yeah. yeah, it's a complex, it, twisted history that you'll have fun yeah. unraveling, Jacob. Yeah. Uh, the, ring, the, the Arrow set gives you the foundation of it, really, yeah. when it comes to film. I they didn't have to throw viral. Ross and Gone on there or whatever, but they did just because Arrow's dope. Nice. You know? uh, that is uh, that is one of the prequels, right? Spiral? That is listed in the extras. Or Spiral, like the- that might be the one I'm yeah. thinking of. Ross and Gone is like on another set. See, it's so confusing. I don't even... Oh. It's like naming Pokemon. There are a this, lot. Of- <laughs> the set I have has Ross and on it. The what? Wait, was that Jake? I said the set that I have and that Brandon has does have Rossin on it. Not is that bad. the Arrow one though? Or are you? Is no, no, it? no. I'll get to it in a minute. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, that's basically my first impression though. Fell in love with the movie. You didn't expect it. It was like a, you know, not love at first sight, but love it maybe like you bumped into each other at, at a, a PO box, <laughs> you know, and then it just became like a weird we kind of see each other in public thing. <laughs> you know, like that, that was my relationship with the ring. And then it eventually just consummated in sweet, sweet love when I saw this for the first time, that gooey corpse at the end and Jake's incessant jokes about Timmy, the movie. If I think if, if he's going, where Timmy, I, he's going, yeah. <laughs> I so, love it. Never, uh, never a fun fact. Um, uh, in Dead by Daylight, you can sometimes buy different outfits for characters, and the corpse Sudoku from the well is a costume for her you can buy. With, like, the green stuff running out of her eye sockets, and, like, the tattered dress. So that is that is another just kind of cool thing they did for the game. Just having a well corpse Sudoku. Anyway, on to your first impression, Jake. Okay, well, um, on on what Dave just said, I'm a little con- I'm a little puzzled about you saying that this wasn't the first. No, uh, uh, there were two shorter films that were uh, done before this. One of them was almost like a skin flick, uh, uh, using some, uh, uh, some of the char- uh, characters and not really following the novel at all. Okay. If you actually watch the okay. uh, the legacy of uh, okay. of uh, uh, the, uh, the ring on the arrow set, set they'll I'm, actually get into a whole. Uh, I may need to get that set. Uh, we'll get to that in a minute. I I oh, was curious yeah. about the set when I got it. One of the reasons I didn't get it. Uh, well, we'll get to it in a minute. Um, so the ring for me. Okay. Uh, well, Ringo ring is closely tied to the ring. Uh, I rem- y'all know me. Y'all know I'm not a the horror fan that y'all are. Uh, I'm I've I've definitely grown to uh, appreciate it quite a bit over the last four years or oh, so yeah. on this channel. But uh, I'm proud of you. But I- you are a gigantic weeb. And- <laughs> <laughs> okay. Where we're well, getting? You no, know, you know well, what I mean. I'm just at the time that this came out. Uh, it was well. Well, at the time that the ring came out, it was huge, and 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 the Grudge, and they were both like these big, big films. And I was already kind of starting to develop my obsession with uh, everything Japanese. Um, I've always kind of been interested in uh, generally Asian stuff, but uh, my I kind of did a back door into it because I wasn't really into horror. I my first okay. now my first Naomi Watts film was actually Mulholland Drive, and I fully I saw Mulholland Drive three times and fell in love with it, and then said, you know what, 
She stars in the ring. I'm going to give that a try. I'm going to see, because this actress, she's hot and she can act. I, I'll give her a try in a, in a horror film. And uh, and so I saw The Ring, and I really enjoyed it. And I want to say, this is where the chronology gets a little fuzzy. There's a set that, uh, again, I know Brandon has it too. It's called Ringo Anthology of Terror. It's just a simple little four-movie set. Ringo Rasen, Ringo Ni, and Ringo Cero. And all four on this set, I, we found at Walmart and both had to snap it up because Walmart had that set on sale for four bucks. I was like, holy shit, I'm getting this. Yeah, <laughs> and, and, and I'm pretty sure, I'm almost sure. But like I said, this is where the chronology gets fuzzy. I think I had watched all four of them before I watched The Ring 2. And my impression of it, it, my first impression of all of them was this, that the Ringu is freaking awesome. The Ring is a damn fine uh, adaptation, but it's not quite as good as the original. Rasen and Ringo Ni are both excellent. Ringo Cero, I have forgotten. And Ring 2 sucked. That was my first impression of all of them. <laughs> and, and it's partly because the Ring 2 has absolutely nothing to do with any of the Japanese story. It goes yeah. off and does a thoroughly I I Americanized... Saw that one. What's uh, that? I, can... I don't think I ever even saw that one. And the yeah. first one, I vaguely remember. I mean, you know, uh, yeah. obviously, it sounds fucked to say, but I was watching it because my girlfriend rented it, and I wanted to touch right. those boobies. You know what I mean? Like, I didn't <laughs> care about whatever ring movie that she rented because it sucked. I mean, I, yeah. I was like a hardcore slasher kid at the time, too, you know. And see, uh, but Ringu always, has that it's special, it's disgusting it's feeling. You know? And then when you hit the end of the movie and you're like, damn, it was disgusting this whole time. I knew it. Yeah. Well, I can't fully go into my reasons for hating The Ring 2 without spoiling some things for Dustin. So I won't uh, at this point. Interesting thing about Ring 2, um, yeah. it doesn't have a Blu-ray. So anyway, oh. go on. <laughs> Well, at any rate, um, Dave is right that there's a very tortuous and weird history to these films because they released Rasen almost simultaneously with Ringo and it was intended to be the sequel, but no one saw it. Everyone loved the first movie, which apparently uh, was more of a ghost story than the book was. And, the se and Rasen had more of a sci-fi vibe to it they were made by different production companies. And so even though they were intended to be a sequel to this, it was a different production altogether and no one saw it. So then they put out Ringu Ni, Ring 2, as a sequel to Ringu. So it's like, it's it's weird. The movie technically has two sequels, but, <laughs> but they're all good films and yeah, I enjoy it's them. the only thing I can like, think of where that exists. Like. <laughs> Yeah, it's but, pretty clear looking at it, but the chronology yeah. was completely to hell right away, so I didn't even try. Right. Um, but this one, uh, it, it must, uh, I think it was uh, Mo kind of got into another thing that occurred to me as we were going into this discussion. This is set up in very many ways like Higarashi, uh, yes. the When They Cry, in that it is more of a murder mystery where they're desperately racing against time to end a curse more than it really is a horror film per se. But it does have a lot of horror elements and horrifying elements mixed in. And it is, a dan at the end of the day, it is a ghost story that's based on Japanese legends and loosely on some historical figures and apparently the a novelist was inspired as well by the poltergeist so there's that connection too um, well, see i've watched this several times and i will tell you now mm -hmm. the, mm -hmm. the the most concise conclusion that i've ever came to 
was that uh, Ringy is basically the story of a very amicable divorce told through the device of a cursed taste. <laughs> it is a remarkably amicable <laughs> That's divorce. That's pretty much the movie. I was, I, I'm amused by this couple, actually. <laughs> yeah, I love that, and, honestly. It's right. like, uh, why can't the whole world work like these dudes do? Right. Where it's like, we're, now, di- we're getting a divorce, all right? And I, we really probably don't like each other. Let's go ahead and go on some cursed tape fucking Scooby-Doo hunt together. Why not? And now, Heal of course... Fucking rotten ass girl out of a well it'll really bring us together <laughs> <laughs> now of course you do have to wonder though a little bit like she sees this cursed tape and who does she go to the ex-husband you gotta wonder if there wasn't an angle there but uh, on the other hand they really do yeah. seem to get along well and then of course for him like not taking the prenup. <laughs> and now she of course uh is played by uh nanako matsushima and she is a gorgeous woman and that make much like naomi Watts, makes gives me something fun to watch and then of course the yeah. husband is played by hiroiki sonata who has become one of the go-to guys in hollywood if you want a japanese dude for your action film you hire hiroiki sonata so this is kind of cool seeing him back in the day hot, you know what i mean <laughs> like they they make perfect perfect sense together it, this could be like an 80s movie and those two would look really good <laughs> together still yeah, uh, they um, look like they'd be members of like some underground motorcycle gang or something like that. But then they're both like movie. totally normal right. roles in this, you know. But at any rate, uh, this is one that um, again I, I do enjoy a good horror uh, haunting film, a good ghost story. I I mean, y'all know I, I I'm not a gore hound, but I like uh, I don't mind a creepy kind of atmospheric kind of and this movie really delivers on that uh it it delivers in most uh the ways where it matters to me as a as a film nerd like it's got great production the the music is great uh it's just it's a well-made film and uh yeah i really liked seeing it i do think this may only be the I'm going to guess third time I've seen this movie. It may even only be the second time. And it has been a while, which is, again, I've forgotten the Ring Zero because it's been so long. Um, But overall, I just, I do like the franchise. And I'm not totally surprised to hear there are that many sequels. Because Sadako is huge in Japan. I've encountered at least one, I think two anime uh, where characters are like heavily associated with her. Um, Kimini Todoke, the main character, is called Sadako because she somehow resembles her, and it's a very unfortunate nickname she has to grow out of as the show goes on. So, definitely, I've seen the pop culture influence of this movie in both Japan and America just grow over the years, but more so in japan so i'm really glad we are getting a chance to talk about it because it was such a big thing at one time and it's you know it's still got some more to give i guess (laughs) yeah don't they have so i could like throw pitches at baseball games nowadays i i saw a story where they did that at least they've done that at least once i've seen the news story actually i could be wrong about this instagram page (laughs) <laughs> I could be wrong about this, but I've gotten the impression that uh, Sadako might be almost as big of a national figure in cinema as uh, in Japan as Rocky Balboa is here. I could be wrong, but it seems possible. That's probably yeah, that seems fair. You know what I mean? Like Rocky is huge, but he's not the pop culture icon you know like he's he's several he's sort of upper lower upper tier you know what i mean like there's so many other fucking <laughs> above the below but below the upper rocky that's a great he's line like in that bubble of the top you know icons right uh, but i don't think japan really works with that horror icon thing like we do here it's kind of a uniquely American sort of a deal. 
uh, when you really start diving into horror in other countries, there are franchises, but uh, vastly superior are just the random horror films that people make, or you know. <laughs> Uh, Japan and America seem to be uniquely suited for franchise media distribution. You know, um, we both take to it really well and embrace it on like a level that other countries are just like, what? <laughs> no, I've never seen Rocky Four. I've been riding a fucking goat to school for the rest of <laughs> most of my life. You know. <laughs> Like it's of course I, I don't, don't, know, I don't really Ford. know about that though. Britain's got the Bond franchise, and we were talking earlier about the Harry Potter. Yeah, Britain definitely gets franchise fever. Yeah, you know, uh, I would add there them are to the menage too. of the the franchise. You know what I'm saying? We like a we like a party, my boy. Uh, but I think most countries yeah, right in right in America. right behind the Ringu franchise in Japan, you've got the uh, the Grudge, the Juon the uh, franchise, and the one missing See, call. That one, I'm pretty that. sure I've only seen the Sarah Michelle Geller one. I don't think I've seen the Japanese one, so I should probably change that. Uh, Ring is pretty dope, though. I, I like the idea of it just being like a tape that distributes a curse, you know. Uh, it's like classic urban legends style shit. Uh, did we get your first impressions, Dave? No, we did not. We were waiting for Jake to finish. Yeah, go ahead, Dave. Um. Well, um. I believe that I came to the ring uh, uh, through the American uh, release uh, of a remake for uh, first, but I did uh, I did uh, watch the uh, the ring uh, back it, the uh, the original ring back like after uh, after I'd seen the the remake i i had to find like the other one um j uh, just because i'm such a fan of uh, the j-horror the stuff that uh, was coming out at the time and I, I i was able to procure a copy um on vhs at one point in time um and uh it frightened me at one point um just just the simple f uh, fact, you know, uh, that you know you've you've got this uh, 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 this father who has like these abilities, and um, he's watching like these historical things that uh, that have happened to the, uh, uh, this you know other family. I mean, this mother daughter uh, suicide. In a volcano type thing, you know. I mean, it's definitely a weird, um, weird sentimentality, especially after I, I after Brandon's gotten me into a, 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 like Higarashi, uh, uh, you know, uh, w w when children cry or whatnot. <laughs> um, when they cry, but yes, children do a lot of crying in it. <laughs> but the fact that that one's ultimately about a virus that was released, you know, um, I, I almost wonder if uh, even that series was somewhat interrelated with it. With, uh, with, I, mean, I mean, it seems like they were definitely afraid of viruses. That is uh, actually a thing. Yeah. Some of the other material too, like the ring curse is like actually a supernatural mutant virus. It's very bizarre. Yeah, it's almost yeah. like their their fear of uh, you know things spreading uncontrollably could have helped us recently. I don't know when that could have been, but uh, <laughs> certainly would have came in handy uh, if more people thought about that. I think uh, the idea you did of, in Japan. Yeah, there you go. But um, I really like the story. I, I mean, I, I mean, 
it's interesting because yeah, you guys mentioned that uh, that this is a divorced couple getting together, uh, together like uh, like th uh, this is something that naturally happens that they go uh, that they go out on a a ghost hunting spree, you know. <laughs> it's just romantic like that, you know. So um, I don't even know if it's romantic, but we'll get into that. But, uh, a little bit, a little bit during. Uh, I didn't even know that they had been a couple until pretty late in the film when they say we shouldn't have had a kid. And it's like, oh, oh, damn. I think it took me till my third watch of the movie to realize they were together at one point. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he, he mentions to a student later on uh, th that this is my ex-wife uh, pretty early on. Um, uh, so I, I, I guess I caught that right, right off. Oh, I know. The first couple times you watch this, though, you're like, damn, it's just like Japanese office people for a minute. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah. what freaked me out more was when the kid like ended up watching the, uh, the movie, uh, 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 the film, and then I was like, oh, my God. No, he's gonna die, you know. Uh, but uh, but um, it's an interesting story, and uh, it, it, there's an interesting mythos surrounding this movie, and I think that's what I like about uh, uh, this particular film, and it and it carries it well throughout the rest of the f uh, film. That sense of dread, and um, you know. Uh, uh, when uh, uh, when it comes to Japanese horror, uh, they also seem to have so uh, 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 st something like with hair, like coming out of like things, yeah, like I think, uh, long pieces of hair. <laughs> an essay once uh, talking about how Asian horror tends to be more like body horror oriented, more like you know, look at how gross this like excretion is, you know, kind of. It's more gooey, I guess, is a way to summarize that whole uh, thing I read that one time. And uh, it feels it feels like that might actually be true, the more uh, Asian cinema I see. Yeah, sometimes they respect the good the texture. Exactly. But uh, that's pretty much my uh, first impression of, uh, of it. I mean, I didn't go into it like you did, which I'm I, I respect uh, for checking the first one uh, uh, one out first, uh, and then you know, uh, eventually going into the uh, rest of the ra uh, ring. Because honestly, I wish I would have uh, done it this way. Because uh, then I wouldn't be comparing it like to the other uh, uh, other. Right. Yeah, it is kind of funny how the ring itself, like the American ring, was one of my blind spots for so long. And then, like, I get to, like, start my ring journey with, like, the real one. Like, a lot of people, I don't think, got to do that. So, duh. It's sort of so, how it feels to me in that I didn't give a shit when I watched it the first time, but I did watch it, you know. So there, there was a little comparison, I guess, subconsciously, if anything, that went on. But Japanese won. So, you know. That's one of the reasons why I was surprised, Dustin, when you said it was your first feeling, because I was like, because uh, again, my from my perspective as an outsider to horror, Ring was the movie that everyone was talking about when it was out. And I'm like, I would have thought all the horror nerds would have seen it years ago. <laughs> See, but you, when you say everyone, you're not talking about what horror uh, nerds were years ago. It yeah, was me and right. fucking Dave on some fucking shitty sub <laughs> message board. You know, yeah. it's not what it is now where like everyone's like, oh, yeah, you know, like we have the Friday the 13th thing on our lawn. It's like, you know, we've always been like this. No, you fucking haven't. You had a goddamn inflatable turkey made out of hay bales in your yard last year. I saw it, you know, <laughs> but it's easier now to be like, because everyone's into that show, right? Well, and then you got win. sensitive fanboy types too, so it's like <laughs> our 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 generations really did win the pop culture battle because now you can just buy everything to your heart's content at the uh, online. You know, you could have Sadako pop out of your goddamn leaf pile and like scare kids to death and chuck actual VHS tapes at them. I'm sure. 
probably not even that complicated of an animatronic, but you know. And the VHS kits are probably pretty cheap, man. You know? Yeah, they were. Uh, they're not as cheap as they were then. That's for sure. Go to a garage sale and get random ones. <laughs> A lot of VHS is really not worth anything. Brandon, did we get your first impression? We are getting to Brandon. Bang him out. Oh, uh, oh, Jake, we never did a say ask you if you were finished with yours. I know that you had stuff that you were going on. Before. Oh no, I'm done. I think I was done. I just wanted to make sure that you were finished first. <laughs> Thanks. Um, I this is not my first time seeing the film. Um, I saw. Uh, the remake in theaters when it came out. I wasn't as big a horror person back then, but I, I was fascinated by um, ghost stories. And I had uh, a dwindling interest in Japanese culture at the time, so I thought, this would be interesting. And I'd heard that the original, that this was pretty much a carbon copy of the original film, and that the sequel was really good. So eventually I uh, stumbled upon that same Walmart deal that, uh, that Jake had mentioned. And I was very glad because for a while that set was going for a fortune. <laughs> um, and I sat down and I just watched all of them, just back to back to back. <laughs> and I'll admit, if I, if I compare the two, I've watched pretty much all of the Ring movies that, that came to the States in some form or another. Uh, the Japanese and the American ones, and I will say that the Japanese ones uh, are definitely superior in many ways, especially to that second ring film. Um, but uh, I was surprised when I originally watched this. Um, it was very much like uh, how uh, Juon and The Grudge or Dark Water, which I think was a, a better example, because Dark Water really was a carbon copy. Um but they did a lot of that at that time, just copying uh, Asian well, horror films. Uh, what well, one last call? Um, uh, Red Eye. Um, a lot of these yeah. were all Dark water. one missed call. Sorry, one missed call. But yeah, all of these were like copies of original like Asian horror films, and uh, that was a renaissance of Asian horror being remade into American films and shipped over here. Um, yeah, it's neat for what it was, but. Um, I think these ones are just so superior. Yeah. And and I thought it was I thought it was fun. I mean, I I enjoyed it the first time I watched it on uh, uh, on DVD. There was something on the uh, Ring DVD which I thought was funny. Is you could get an extra to where you could watch the film, and then it would make the phone call sound uh, afterwards. Well, back then I had a phone. I like a landline that made that sound and it was late at night and I actually jumped <laughs> when I that phone call because I wasn't expecting it. <laughs> and I thought somebody had actually called me. <laughs> so uh, the film did suitably creep me out when I first watched it. It doesn't do it now, but I'm kind of desensitized these days. I mean, we're talking what early 2000s versus today. Uh, you know, it's uh, definitely I was, yeah, just was literally twenty years ago. So, so, uh, so it, it wasn't as it wasn't as creepy to me this time around, but I still feel it holds up. Sadako is, uh, not, well, you know, the uh, the Japanese version is actually suitably uh, creepy, and uh, I was glad that uh, we get a chance to actually talk about it because it's a fun film. And I'm glad we're talking about the the original first before we uh, talk about the you know the the big uh, American version. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> all right. So now that we've gotten all that out of the way, so uh, let's just go right into the movie. Uh, I don't know if we're going to cover. It beat for beat. We're going to try to do this a bit of an abridged form, but so uh, the opening is these two girls telling each other this urban legend about a tape that kills you in seven days. And at first it's kind of like jokingly, 
on so one of the girls was like i did see a tape like that actually and then we're kind of off like we get to, it feel it does feel a lot like the opening of scream like it's kind of unassuming but you know, something is still off you know like my like mo mentioned earlier yeah there's a certain so, little tingle to the air of the scene it's not even a tangible thing it's just something in the writing maybe i'm more suspicious than i or superstitious than i believe but uh, <laughs> there's there's some shit in the writing of this movie that i almost hear like a high-pitched noise like a shing like the moment that scene starts and then she's talking to that girl maybe that actually is in the soundtrack i don't know but it could be there's a lot of stuff with sound it's it's weird man when i start watching this movie like the moment they start talking i'm like oh shit you know and there, there's just something to that and they're not even saying anything that great there's like nabisco containers all around them the girl's wearing a pro kid sock which is like a a shirt or i mean a pro kid sweater which is like you know a line of socks and shoes they did in the 80s i guess it was like japan's version of the the converse chuck taylor's make of that what you will <laughs> I, I got curious enough about it because i've watched this first scene of the movie a lot of the times and it's it's pretty nuts and i'm gonna stop this so those cats aren't in, in this thing, so. i was gonna say what's going on with those cats are they like dying or well, there's just it's a lot of cats now. kittens but uh anyway so um you know we get our basic setup you know there's a i hear there's a tape like i saw a tape and a couple of odd things start happening so when the, the girl who saw the tape plays it off as oh it was a joke and you know we think we think we're okay and then something kills her from off camera after her friend leaves the room and that's when we really kind of get off to the races with this so we meet our main character pretty soon after mm -hmm. so she's yeah she's a newspaper reporter yeah it seems like she's like working for a rag newspaper like for um like some special column or something like that uh it looks like a respectable paper yeah but uh, anyway she's interviewing uh, high school students about the rumor that's been going around and during the interview she learns you know people actually did die on the same day and one of the people who died the girl from the beginning is actually her niece so we learn some more details at her niece's funeral and yeah. uh, mystery kind of stuff kind of gets going yeah i believe uh she actually goes and uh doesn't she like look up uh, in the new, in like the archives that there, and there was in fact a couple had that had died in their car? Yeah, the girl in the interview tells her uh, that their friends died in their car after having seen the tape, and on a hunch she checks the newspaper for that day and sees there's a report of two of two high school students who did die in their car the way the urban legend says so she has somebody figure out the name of the school and she goes there to interview people and uh, realizing there's a connection to her niece and then she talks to some of her niece's classmates at the funeral I, I really like how they handle this whole thing because it doesn't it doesn't follow into anything uh, preconceived it really does come from a place of skepticism on her part, I mean, at first when she hears the rumor, she kind of passes it off. But then when she's going to like her relative's funeral, when she's having some of this stuff, she gains more and more traction. And I love the way that it's a mystery and she is actually literally having to find clues that lead to, well, right. where it leads. <laughs> I'm not going to jump ahead, but yeah, I love that uh, part of this movie. It's very different from a lot. Yeah, it develops very organically. Like, it's just, it's not like a string of, like, coincidence coincidences. It's like, 
It's like, oh, I heard this thing. Oh, there might be something to this. Let's look a little further into it. Oh, there's really something going on here. Let's keep going. Like that's kind of the pace that they're, that her investigation follows. So it's not like a lot of movies try to, there are a lot of movies try to do something similar, but it still feels like forced. Whereas this was just completely different. Like it all flowed and um, it was, it was just so well done. Like it's, it's hard to not just devolve into praise for this. But uh, I guess kind of skipping ahead a little bit. So eventually she figures out, so the four, the four people who died all saw the tape during a getaway to somewhere, but nobody seems to know where exactly where they went. So through some sleuthing, like she figures out, she finds a roll of film that they hadn't developed from their trip, and she's able to use landmarks to figure out where they went. And it ends up sending her to this cabin. And the cabin is where she finds, well, she doesn't find the tape in the cabin, uh, she is asking the manage the property manager some questions, and she notices yes. a shelf full of tapes. And there's just one like unlabeled tape in like a white sleeve. And she asks, you know, what's that? And the label is blank. Like it, the guy doesn't seem to know where it came from. And she takes it to the cabin and watches it, and it's Sedeco's tape. So we get a bunch of well weird imagery followed by a phone call with nobody on the other end of the line. Because an except, yeah. except it does say, uh, say one week. It does say one week? Yeah. Um, and she quickly puts it down. Uh, you actually see a subtitle that says one week. Uh, uh, that's the funny th uh, thing. Oftentimes when we think of it as seven days, it seems like they refer to it as one week, which is technically seven days in our terms. So I wonder if I got like a glitch or something on mine. Mm -hmm. I a subtitle for that. That's that's messed up. Um, but uh, well, anyway, so she pretty quickly pieces together. They died exactly a week after they saw this tape, just like in the story. So she mm -hmm. sets about trying to figure out how to break the tape's curse, like figure out its origins, etc. Uh, she invites her ex-husband in and kind of against her her wishes, like he insists on watching the tape himself. And that's when they really start their investigation. So they, they analyze the tape segment by segment, and the tape has a lot of clues as to what actually happened. Uh, so I think the first wasn't the first clue. I think the first clue was eruption. So they start looking for like newspaper articles about an eruption. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, because when he slowed the tape down, he uh, he heard something in ja uh, 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 Japanese, and uh, that's well, what, one, of what the, it's... one of the frame. One of the frames was a uh, new was like just writing, and so that's what I started with eruption. Like they do yeah. hear a phrase uh, later on. Uh, frolic and brine, goblins be thine. And it turns out to be a local saying from uh, the place that had the volcano eruption. Like it was predicted by a local psychic. And so they find the new story about that. Yeah. So it's, Whatever that local it's peninsula cool, was. What? What was the name of that peninsula? Uh, I think it was the. Was it like the I. I, I want to say Ivo. Isu. Okay. Isu. I was trying to say Ivo, but it's like, I know that's wrong. It's very close, but I know it's wrong. Uh, and so they, they go there to learn more about this psychic lady, and eventually they find out she had a daughter who disappeared. That is true. Well, they also, uh, uh, I think the father, uh, the husband or whatever, he, he had actually uh done some research himself and he he found uh, some research that had uh, had to do with evidently the doctor that had done some experiments yeah a doctor had come to try to study esp by studying studying her and he ended up uh, well having an affair with her basically but it is it's suggested that sadako might have been his daughter but also that um sadako at some point, they say maybe the father wasn't human. So I don't think the doctor actually was Sadako's father. There you go. 
I mean, yeah, that's uh, I can see that. Um, and according to the what I was reading up on this one, I don't, yeah, apparently, I think the doctor was based very much on an historical figure, and that the mother and and Sadaka were loosely based on historical people that he studied. Um, but yeah, so that was kind of an interesting. I was like, oh, I didn't realize that. <laughs> yeah. But, so let's uh, let's take a moment for the plot to kind of breathe here. Uh, so how do we feel about sort of the first uh, act and a half of this movie? Anything uh, really stick out to you guys that you feel like talking about? I like the investigation in general. Like I said, I thought that was rather cool that they come to it very organically. You actually could see it leading out like this. It wasn't just this overt, well, I'm smart. I've got it all figured out already. <laughs> it was, um, it took le legitimate work between the two. Uh, I also feel like that whole thing, I mean, that led to the island, the sun seeing the tape, um, all of that, uh, all those motivations, it did increase the tension. Whereas the other movie, uh, I think also the remake also handled that fairly well, but utilized a lot more effects to show like that they're still being haunted, which is kind of funny because if you really look at how it was uh, resolved, she was, re she was resolved of the curse at almost the very beginning of the film <laughs> after she, after she had Spoiler. gotten cursed. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, but, yeah, uh, it, it's it, so it's kind of funny how that worked out, but uh, I still think that it was great how it went about that. Uh, analyzing the video, looking for all the clues, and then tracking it down. Uh, generally, I don't like slow moving stuff like that, but it really did uh, click with me here. Yeah, apparently, uh, so I read Sudoku's Wikipedia page for yeah. some of like the character history that we didn't get in the film, and uh. Apparently, in the original story, uh, the first group of kids who are killed by Sadako erased the last little bit of the tape, like as a prank, which is the part that explains how you lift the curse. So I just thought that was kind of a weird kind of comedy beat that was excluded from the film. So. Man, it got real quiet all of a sudden. I laughed at it, but then I had my mic muted. <laughs> <laughs> it was just like, boom, dead silence. And it's like, oh, man, is that really that interesting? Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> no, it works pretty good. And the, um, <laughs> yeah, and, and I guess uh, I talked to the, like, that initial scene again. So those tapes girls. on the wall. At the lot. Are we prepared to talk about that? Yeah. They there's have some bangers on that one. There, yeah. yeah. I bet there were. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I've been sitting here with two fucking delicious still screens of that. Uh, I, I would have sent them in chat, but my internet sucks. But I can confirm that there is a copy of Child's Play 2 on the top shelf. I saw Jaws. To copy well. of, yeah, Jaws is there next to a copy of Duel. Uh, which I thought was pretty cute. Nice. Uh, there's a copy of the Money Pit next to a copy of Flash Dance. Uh, there is two copies imagine of the how, Godfather. Imagine how much fun it would be to sit in a cabin like that and watch da Jaws dubbed in Japanese. <laughs> All right, and that's just the first shelf, bro. Okay, after that, we have uh, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. We have The Thing. We have a uh, Teen Wolf. Pretty sure this is Terminator. Um, then we also have stuff like uh, you know, Forty Eight Hours or the Indiana Jones trilogy. Okay, also over there. Uh, we got <coughs> Top Gun. You know, gotta have that uh, in your Japanese cabin experience. I don't know why they would want to. Watch movies about Americans flying fighter planes. Actually, that yeah. Top Gun would be another one would be pretty hilarious to, to do. That. Uh, <laughs> although I'm sure Brandon would agree with this. They got if they got a copy of Weekend and Bernie's were set. And there's <laughs> ones in there I didn't even notice at first. Like Golden Child with Eddie Murphy has probably the worst picture 
I don't know if that looks like Eddie Murphy. It's it's a <laughs> it's it's pretty it's not good. Um, but if you take a good still frame image of that scene, you know there's a lot of good tapes on there. I would have been a regular customer of that. Uh, what was it like? A little cabin place? It was like a little resort, yeah. Yeah, it was a nice resort. I mean, they got like people playing tennis yeah. and stuff like that. Actually, they showed a heck of a lot more of the resort in this than they did in the remake. Remake, it felt like just a cabin in the woods that had like a, the day ran out, but this one was a little bit more. Uh, that's what I'm thinking. It might be a real resort, like maybe it's still a place we could just go actual watch this movie in the resort where it was filmed. How rad would that be? That would be pretty awesome. <laughs> uh, little little eerie though, kind of like how like you're for sure people... getting cursed if that's yeah. what's going on. <laughs> that would be, be like getting uh, getting to spend the night in Dracula's castle. <laughs> so, uh, but uh, yeah, I've been kind of pounding along through the plot here. Uh, Anybody want to uh, just talk about anything that's happened that uh, we've gotten through so far? No, I was waiting patiently for the videotape thing. So um, this, this they basically discovered that it's true is what's, is what's happened. Uh, did I miss anything? <laughs> no, I, I one thing I had I had thought about is it was interesting how they how they decided to brave the waters of the ocean during a uh, typhoon there, but I understand why. I mean, he's like, what? You could just wait a day. No, <laughs> we can't wait a day. We, we actually can. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have a day. So I, I just found that funny how they were like, no, we can't wait a day. We gotta get going. <laughs> I mean, I uh, guess you could say. If we couldn't paddle through typhoons, we probably wouldn't exist today. But I'd just rather not, you know. Um, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you're probably even better off in a little craft like that where you can be like, oh, 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 and then swim for a bit and then kind of bail it out and keep going with it, I guess. Whereas a ship sinks and you're just kind of fucked, you know. Like, your one little dude on the ship. Anyways, that's what Jake's talking about when he talks about, you know, unneeded segues. No, it's oh. nothing to do with right? <laughs> ah, here's, here's sure it was fun I to think noticed, about. I too noticed the tapes, and I was like, hey, I, I, I yeah. forgot about that, though. I'm glad you mentioned that. Yeah. But, um, um, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, eventually, uh, they learned that uh, the psychic, uh, his name I'm afraid to say because I'm worried I'll mispronounce it, not going to lie. Uh, do you have that for us, Jake? Isako, was that it? I, I said, uh, sorry. <laughs> Who are we talking about? Sedeka's mother. Oh, right. Um that was. Uh, I want to say it's Shizuko. Am I remembering that correctly? Okay, uh, something I similar somebody, to that. I want somebody to double check my memory. So yeah, she Shizuko Shizuko Yamamura. Yeah. Which yeah uh, yeah Shizuko Yamamura is is the mother. Yeah. So, and that's uh, that's basically where their investigation leads. And they they pretty much they basically use this information to figure out, you know, she did have a daughter who was who went missing. You know, so they they try to find the doctor and Sadako. They don't at first they think Sadako might be alive, but they quickly kind of rule that out. Right. It seems unlikely that she would be. <laughs> well, the thing with the doctor and stuff had happened uh, 40 some years ago. So at first I think, you know, so right. that would be in her 40s. And uh, 
Nope. <laughs> and uh, where is it? They they eventually do find a tape. They find some tape of um, the doctor actually killing Sadakel. He hits over a, over the head and pushes into a well. Does that just appear for them? Like, where does that come? Where did they get that? If I recall correctly, um, uh, basically the husband, uh, what was his name? Um, the uh, Hiroyuki Sonata's character. Uh, I don't think they really specifically said uh, Ryuji, uh, Ryuji Takeyama. Um, I don't know that they specifically described it this way, but he seemed to be somewhat of a retrocog. I, I don't remember the exact term for someone that can see an object's past by touching it. Yeah, but he has. Some, yeah, he has flashes of a similar ability to that. And I think he is able to see these things and somehow, I guess, transmitted him to his wife, too. Uh, so I was a little unclear about exactly what his skill set was supposed to be, but. It's his yeah. dick, bro. Like, he's just uh, laying down such sweet Japanese pipe that he's fucking you know, attracting <laughs> all types of mystical abilities and unfortunately cursed videotape. Um, Fascinating theory. Yeah, that's a good, uh, it's an it's an active. To be, one. To be fair, he's, <laughs> he's a pretty attractive man. Like when he first appeared, like yeah, he is. I was I'm like, man, that's a good looking guy, and I yeah. don't normally think that way. So, uh, yeah, he's a piece. Well, like I said, uh, Hiroyuki Sonata definitely has gone on to uh, quite uh, quite a bit of renown. Uh, he is he is one of the go-to guys uh, for uh, Japanese characters in American films. He's in uh, the John Wick uh, franchise. He played uh, Scorpion in Mortal Kombat. He's let's see here the he new. Did. I thought he looked fucking he, familiar. Man. He he played Shingen in the Wolverine. Uh, in addition to having roles in Lost, Rush Hour 3, The White Countess, The Last Samurai. I mean, he's done a lot of stuff on both sides of the Pacific at this point. Um, so he's he's probably one of the... Uh, and, and I have no doubt that looks are part of it. But he's also a damn solid actor. So, you know, that's that's pretty cool, too. Yeah, he, he does a great job with the role. Yeah. Solid dude. Oh, I guess we can move forward. To when they <laughs> uh, now they now they've left the island. They come back and they uh, they got to resolve that last bit before the yep. time runs out because she's got yep. like one day left and her time runs out at seven o'clock. <laughs> yep, yep. So they find the. Uh... <coughs> Yeah, they go looking. They come ready to excavate a well, basically. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure fitting they, it into a work week was not at all written in there as part of a way to make it just easier <laughs> to do in Japan. You know, like oh, we can they can spare thirty minutes on the side. Half of these people probably went back to work for like eight hours after they did stuff in this movie. Uh, oh. I don't know what the behind the scenes <laughs> thing was, but. Well, uh, apparently she had. This is all a part of her investigation, so so she was doing this all for work, which is this is her excuse. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he was a professor, and it's it didn't seem like he had classes maybe that week. Like he was doing a lot of private tutoring that we saw. So I think that's probably what he had going on. So, is it me or was the way that they decided to go about this difficult? Like. We're going to bail out the water until it's all out of the well. Um, I'm sorry, but one yeah. thing about to that halfway point where he was just like waist high, where he could sift at the bottom. I really think that that should have been when they stopped pulling up the boat, the well buckets, and uh, 
because it would have been quicker at that point. You could find a skeleton or at least the remains of something by sifting around the bottom by that point, especially one as intact as that one was. <laughs> Probably. It basically rises to meet her when she goes down there to look in the well. Yeah, she was just waiting for her. It's like, you are inefficient at your job. <laughs> uh, I did find it very creepy how when she lifts her up, like what's left of the skin just falls slowly off the skeleton. That that was a, a really cool and creepy effect. The hair is sloughing off. That was really cool. Yeah. So, and Sadako's skeleton is indeed still at the bottom of that well, and that was uh, that was a pretty memorable mo moment too. Like when I saw that with like the muck like oozing out of the eyes, I was like, "Oh, that's where that outfit comes from." Because <laughs> it seemed like they made a big deal about having that in the game, and I was like, "Huh, is that important?" Like, actually, yes, quite so. So. I, I I enjoyed that moment specifically even more for that reason. So and anyway, they think that after they've found Sudoku's body, that uh, that'll lift the curse and that they're in the clear because our heroine's time well expired. Like the curse was supposed to kill her at what was it seven oh eight. And they made it past 7.010, and right. the authorities had come and, like, retrieved the body from the well, and they're like, oh, well, that's that. Right. So, until the next yeah, day, I think it's good we get now. a great little bait and switch there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I remembered from some conversations I had with people, like, when, uh, I, I think I asked a couple people, it's like, so what exactly happens in the ring when the uh, Dead by Daylight stuff came out? just because I wanted like a little bit of backstory. And I think it was actually Yumo who kind of slipped that both of them died. And so I was like, I'm pretty sure both of these guys die, right? <laughs> Maybe. I might have talked about the handsome fella dying. I don't know oh. if it's ever really said with the other girl, right? Like at the end, she's probably kills her grandpa. This movie leaves it open-ended. Or, or rather, it leaves her in a position which I kind of like this. There's the, this sick little twisted part of my soul that likes this. The idea that she's literally driving down the road with the intention of spreading this poison to other unsuspecting people. Yeah, no, uh, that's how I always look at it, you know. Yeah, like we, uh, before we get to that, like where she finally pieces right. out what she has to do to avoid the curse, uh, mm -hmm. we do get Raiko's death scene, which is the first time we see Sadako, like in the full, like come out of the TV with uh, True. That you was know, huge right. moment. the big set and, piece or whatever they call it. Yeah. yeah, and damn, like that was, I'm not gonna forget that. That was pretty crazy. It's pretty rad. And now that one was, and, and there were parts of both. I know in the uh, remake, uh, I think that they did a pretty good job of doing that like weird kind of scrambly-ness to the character. But that look that they have, and you see it on the poster, where you see the eye, uh, her eye like coming through the hair. Oh, that man, really it's does so get... fucking creepy. <laughs> it really is. They did uh, more with less, I think, in a way. <laughs> Yeah, you don't get to see her face. Thing. Yeah. Like, even the eyeball yeah. and the hair is... Mm -hmm. It's like gross and matted and shit. So, I had a question for y'all. When when she was driving along with that intention of spreading the love, uh, was it just me or did it, the love. Uh, that she was uh, intending on um, basically having the grandparent see it and die? <laughs> like, hey, I've got well, something to, that that uh, that I need to show. <laughs> well, if well, he is able to spread it on, you know. But yeah, that is a possibility. When I, when I was watching it happen in the summaries, when I was watching it with Kim, 
she had um, brought up the film. Um, what was the one about the STD? Um, follows some. It follows. And I thought about that. I was like, you know, yep. that's actually not that far off from what they're doing here. Really, it's just it's uh, the same thing. Just oh, transmitted more invasive. <laughs> yeah. I feel like with it follows, he at least get laid or some <laughs> form of it. Yeah. Um, with this one, it's just kind of ah, I accidentally watched this tape. Like I thought I was gonna see a dope fireman giving like a tutorial of how to properly make ribs in his backyard uh you know what i mean like you're hoping for like some piece of lost footage not you know like a curse tape god damn it you know like that's one of those cursed tapes again martha it's like what are we <laughs> what it's are like these things and you just cast some fucking catholic spell on it i don't <laughs> So these days, uh, I it, just don't ever want to be posed with that situation. So don't leave your curse tapes at the fucking <laughs> at the goddamn lodge that I'm really hoping is still a real place, so that I can rent a place there someday. So, yeah. um, maybe watch that Child's Play two tape that they have. Yeah, the fake out in this when they think they've lifted the curse. Uh, oh. Remind me of one of the scary movies where they have like a fake Samara character. Uh, I'll fix it a co character. And they think they've left the curse, and she's like, I'm free. Peace. I'm screwing with you. I'm just going, I'm still going to kill you. It's like, oh, okay. I, I, I directly yeah, yeah. thought of that when Sadako came out of the TV. <laughs> uh, did anybody actually catch the twist the first time they watched uh, either this film or the original? Well, that Obviously, the grandpa was going to like die? I mean that uh, that yeah well that the father yeah, of the kid was going to die anyway that they didn't really li lift the curse beforehand. Yeah, no, I I got that the first time, but I don't think I understood it. Like there was, and then there's that second time where it's like, oh, those Japanese, yeah, well, the, the grandfather's definitely taking it on. You know. Well, for me, it was kind of a rug pull because I thought, oh, I thought they both died. Well, maybe they fixed this, and then it was just like, nope. <laughs> So, I mean, I, I think uh, my stupidity, for lack of a better term, kind of kind of made that part of the movie better. See, I don't think I knew about any of the other shit beyond that either. Like, I didn't really th think too much on it. So I didn't expect you know, when, the father when, to die. And when time. he, like, you know, basically takes it, it took me a second watch maybe in like a third or fourth to realize like oh the grandpa's gonna die because he's like old and they're japanese you know that's just how they roll with that shit you know like uh, i, I think having, Go ahead. i mean i think having it like that or having it uh open-ended or even allowing that uh for that bit of a surprise at the end uh, the first time through, it does give it a, a cool effect for first time watchers who haven't had it ruined by either watching the remake first, like me, or uh, or yeah. having heard it from pop, pop culture or something else, which, you know. I mean, I knew enough of this. I think it's a big testament to how good this movie is and that I did know a lot of it just from pop culture. Uh, still but it's still very effective. Like, it didn't, like, I got a lot of spoilers, but it was such a great ride, it really didn't matter. I think is what I'm getting at. I guess it's a lot of spoilers that aren't really spoilers, though. It's shit that's like, oh, it's about, like, cursed tapes or whatever. Uh, I don't think it ever really occurred to me the, you know, depth that you could do with that. Oh, I mean... I watched this movie and it's like you know, yeah so which Makes one sense. so which was the movie that started this whole uh process of japanese horror movies being redone uh american style uh horror wise i mean godzilla technically was the first to do that but i mean like actual like remakes uh, of Japanese horror movies almost shot for shot because really The Ring was almost a shot for shot remake of Ringu. Uh, like I said, the only one that 
adheres even closer to that is dark dark water but uh was this the first one in that or do you think was there some was there one earlier was uh one missed call earlier or doesn't dark water have the girl from the labyrinth in it i'm not sure um but dark water is a good one yeah yeah I really like Dark Water. I have both of them. Water. I don't know if I've, have I even heard of Dark Water. What do you use Dark Water? Dark Water is Jack the other horror film apparently uh, remake by the same Jennifer. brand new director. Yeah. Yeah, it was a pretty cool. Um, I mean, I thought I thought a lot of these were pretty cool things to bring. I mean, that The Grudge, uh, One Missed Call. Um, God, what was the other one? Uh, like I said, Red Eye, and then there are a whole bunch. I am kind of glad that these days uh, we're seeing less of, oh, we need to remake these as uh, American movies to apply to appeal to the audiences, and we're getting yeah. them kind of direct these days instead. I mean, they're still doing remakes. Let's, let's face it. Netflix is notorious for doing that sort of BS, um, but... But there is a, uh, but I think that there is more of a pull to see these in their original form than there was back in the day. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. So, and I think I mean, you can be mad about all the remakes or whatever. You could look at it as a way that's making people, you know, aware that there is an original. Of course, this is not the first Japanese horror we've covered here. I mean, shoot, Mo, you brought Evil Dead Trap to us. Uh. I did. <laughs> Unfortunately uh, not, for some. <laughs> yeah. I'm actually kind of thankful because the first movie is amazing. The second movie is okay, but the first movie was freaking cool. I like them both for varying reasons. but yeah. uh, I think I like Ring You a whole lot better. Oh, yeah. Uh, it, so, okay. Are we ready to move to effects? And... <laughs> yeah. Well, I think we can probably do that. So we're uh, we're trying to keep this uh, kind of under control in terms of our runtime, and I think it's going to be good. So moving a little faster than uh, we normally do. Hey, here. bro, come on. Okay. Uh, look, look, yes, that's what we're doing. Let's have a good time. Mike, correct or? it. You know, we've yes. already mentioned it, and let's just. Where do you want us to be? Oh, oh, special effects. <laughs> well, uh, well, if, uh, to lead off, I think that the effects in this film actually did uh, did their job. They weren't as spicy as the uh, remake, but uh, I think that having a little bit less to work with, like I think the death grins on the victims. And the American movies were exaggerated more to the point where they were even more creepy. But I do think that with what they had, they did quite an amazing job of conveying something extremely creepy. Uh, like I said, those death smiles were still freaking. I mean, not death smiles, like that, like you know, frightened look on their face when they died. That yeah. Little, got very well expressed. Greens. They look <laughs> organic here. Yeah, I believe them. And. The only thing that was a little bit off was that like cheesy effect of her coming out of the TV kind of looked like something out of a TV movie, but that that was that you know I mean they weren't working with the highest budget in the world, so still. I honestly like that scene, uh, and I don't actually consider that cheesy at all, or at least especially the first time around. That was the first time. Yeah. That, uh, I mean, even though. I saw it in the it happened in the ring, uh, seeing it in Ringu and seeing it the way, the way that they did it, it still was creepy <laughs> to me. Especially what better time in your life out all for, like uh, creepy you know, and like world. not angles. Indeed. <laughs> What better well, time I said than earlier? Life, I thought the real production world was solid. Of the, you know, some shit like that. Like, you... yeah, Mo. Somebody was saying something. Uh, it sounds like somebody got cut off. 
Well, oh, oh, he may have dropped. Oops. Well, Jake, uh, what were you saying? What were you saying? <laughs> Well, I was just saying that, you know, I'd already said earlier that I thought the production was solid overall in this film. I thought the uh, um, effects, yes, uh, for the most part. I like the care that, you know, I, I'm going to say the care that went into making that really creepy-ass old video that they were watching. <laughs> and I thought that was uh, reasonably, it was more head-scratching than anything, but it was it was... I could imagine if you're out in the cabin and pop this random tape in and you're watching, you're like, what the hell was that? <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, they did a pretty good job getting the The one, one makeup effect that does, this is something that kind of does wig me out. It's not a favorite of mine. The whole idea of like removed nails, especially if they're removed under duress. It kind of creeps me out. So there are a couple of cringe moments in this film, but not cringe because they're bad. It's because they they did their job too well. They're really visceral. <laughs> yeah. Like photograph that yeah. too. Like when they're in the well, he sees Sadako's nails stuck in the sides. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm uh, actually I'm looking at Sadako's character model, and she does not appear to have uh, nails. So they kept that. That's pretty cool. Yeah, and uh, and I think there was some comments earlier about like the cabin itself and everything. Like I think overall, like the the everything, the the sets and everything. I thought were just really effective. Like I kind of like I'm kind of like this looks like a fun place to stay for the weekend, you know. Except for all the creepy killer video stuff. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it a pretty pretty big damper on all the fun. Yeah. Oh, the settings are also. I think right. production design. We we always we always fall on the effects and the costumes, but the but the actual settings were pretty cool i mean having that ferry going across the ocean that had right. to pain in the butt shoot uh you know the island the uh the actual uh resort itself i mean it was pretty cool as a set and that as, as you said that well and then those little nails the fingernails in there i mean that was just that was great great touches yeah I indeed yeah, the the uh, the stuff of the sea was pretty cool too. Like how they like shot it. Like they they have like the most ominous dark ocean I've ever seen in a movie. Right, yeah. right. And in that phrase, it's repeated something like the goblins and the briny or whatever it was. It's just such a weird ominous phrase. It's a lot of fun. Oh yeah, and when he's <laughs> next to old and Brian from the line. Yeah, and when he's sitting next right. to the old man saying it, he, he just looks at him and he's like, oh, like how the fuck did you know? Say it. The old man knows, oh shit, you know. So, uh, I did kind of wonder what that was, because uh, in the game, uh, Sadako's abilities are like tied to, of course, stuff she can do in the film. And sometimes those sometimes the icons for them have uh, quotes from the film or the character or whatever and that was that is on one of her uh one of her perks frolic and brine goblins be thine and i was like what does that mean and well i got my answer huh? oh. what about the music uh thoughts on that i mean because i you know it's weird i I know that the music did its job, but at the same time, I don't have any direct memory of any individual yeah. tune or oh, yeah. that struck. No, I, but the music was spectacular in this, though. When I noticed it, I was like, damn, this is great. Like, I, I want to get a hold of this soundtrack. It, it definitely, to me, I, I agree. I really, really liked the music, but I... I, again, it wasn't it wasn't catchy. It wasn't something that immediately you're like, okay, I'm going to remember that tune. 
But I'm sure if I were to see this film a few times, I'd remember it a lot more. It, it falls into the category of those kind of scores where it's like, yeah, that's some great music, but I'm not going to be humming this thing for the next few days. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's more complimentary to the film. Right, right. Yeah. But it definitely does its job in the film and, and helps with that sense of the creeping dread and, and, and all that kind of fun stuff. <laughs> I think the score is pretty good. Um, I, after watching it like quite a few times, uh, I've noticed it uh, over time because uh, once you get to know the storyline, you you get to hear the the underlying currents of of, of the tracks. And I thought it went well with the movie, so uh, I, I guess I'm on Nathan's. Uh, uh, side here about get, uh, uh, getting a possible soundtrack to it. Mm. Well, so music, by the way, by Kenji <laughs> Kawai. I like uh, the name. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so, um, with that, being said. Let's go into favorite scenes and our favorite character. Um, how about you, uh, Brandon? Uh, what were your favorite scenes or character? Um, I think my favorite part of this film is always the beginning. Whether it's the remake or the original that opening scene it just it's it's just like scream with the with the popcorn it's just iconic to me and it always just suits me on that end i mean if i'm going to go with favorite character i don't know uh i'll, I'll go with the grandfather because i feel sorry for what's going to happen to him later on huh. <laughs> hey, that's valid Uh, okay. uh, I'm not sure if I, I guess I'll go next. I'm not sure uh, if I know what my favorite thing from this is. Cause I, I enjoyed so much of it. Um, I think I'm, I might, I think I'll go with like the money shot of seeing Sudeko finally like come out of the TV. Cause it's like, I know that's how she kills people. Like I know that's her thing. And we don't get to see it like until the very end. And so as soon as her tape like flickered on and we saw her like crawl out of the well, I was like, Hell yeah, here we go. So I, I think I was most excited for that moment, so I will use that as my favorite. Good deal. Okay. What this, about you, Jake? Well, and this definitely is a um, an example of one of those less is more kind of like you keep the, the, the killing force off screen as long as you can. I, and I generally do think that's an effective way to do it. So yeah, you're right. That big reveal when it happens is is pretty fun. Um, and I love how they pull that bait and switch where they're so relieved that they broke the curse, and it's like, no, you didn't. <laughs> and again, <laughs> that shot of her driving off at the end. And, like, you know what she's going to do. And it just, I don't know why I like that as much as I do. Uh, I don't know that I would necessarily pick any other scenes over those. Maybe. So there's a couple shots here and there that are great. It's, it's one of those films that's got... A few great moments scattered throughout. And yes, the opening scenes where you're seeing the urban legend side of it, like the, the oh, is this really real or is it just a rumor? You know, that, you know, and, and it doesn't hurt that we got the cute young, you know, audiences uh, or, or narrators for those part. But it's, yeah, it, 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 I, I'm probably going to go with those two parts near the end as favorite scenes. As far as character, um, maybe the... I'm tempted to say the couple at the center of it because I really like 
both of them. Particularly, I think this time around, I gravitated more toward Sonata, uh, Ryuji or whatever, uh, mm. more toward him uh, as a character. Um, so that's... Uh, that's that's about it uh, for that. And I want to throw out real quick um, another little connection. Um, guess what? One of the other things that Kenji Kawai scored was. Which one? Higarashi When They Cry. Pretty much <laughs> every part of the franchise. Uh, <laughs> Maybe that's why I, li I like the score. I really did like the score for Higar yeah. Higarashi. And he's done a bunch. Of, he did the live action Death Note movies. He's done a, a number of things over the years. But I just thought that was kind of amusing because we were talking about Higurashi. I was like, oh, wow. And that's one of the reasons why. <laughs> uh, kind of a minor thing I noticed, too. Uh, this was done by the guys who, this is done by the studio who did like the camera movies. Uh, because I noticed the the logo that came up for Katakawa Pictures, and I was like, this is really, really familiar. Where do I know this from? And I yeah. looked it up, it's like Katakawa Daie. So, mm -hmm. It's just kind of a fun connection I felt was worth mentioning. Oh yeah, Katakawa is a pretty big name uh, in anime releasing, but also with a lot of live action stuff too, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think so they had like eight of the 10 like highest grossing Japanese films ever made. Yeah, I believe it. That's what their Wikipedia said, at least. I'm going to have to go with Sadako uh, uh, for my favorite character. Um, uh, she's just so wicked looking, um, especially when you like get to see her coming out of the well. Oh, uh, oh, uh, well. But my favorite moment in this film, as of right, it, it used to be the coming out of the TV or the well scene, but um, I really like the moment where the wife, uh, it, 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 she steps into her husband's vision and just from there on out, because you can see her in his vision and it's like, she doesn't have any powers or whatsoever, but for some supernatural reason, she's like sucked into whatever he's seen, you know? And right. she, she's affected by it. So for some reason, I just enjoyed that whole sequence. Yeah, and she sees Sadako's telekinetic murder that happened when she was alive. Yeah, that is just so awesome. You know, uh, that, uh, that right. sequence right there alone just sucks me in each time. Oh, real quick. Um... So, Sadako grabbed her during that. So she was there right. in some sense. Like, both of them were there and could interact. And she had finger burns from Sadako's touch. Right. Like until they solved the well mystery. And uh, speaking yeah. of uh, offshoots of Sadako's powers, did uh, did we mention what happened to people after they were photographed? I can't remember. I don't think we did. Like their faces turn out blurry if they're photographed during the current. Right. Yeah. So that was kind of an interesting effect. And it was one of the ways she double checked it was the big way that she wanted to check to make sure that the curse was active on her you know she forced him to take a polaroid and it was like uh well yeah that's one of those items the photo of the four yeah. with uh the twisted ah. and just recently sense. i watched uh the original japanese version of shutter um not too long ago that was another one. It was a one-off thing that was never uh, that was remade once. Uh, that was also part of the, you know, whole Japanese remake phase, you know. Um, and one of the things that they said in that uh, movie, without spoiling the entire th uh, thing, is uh, the fact that a Polaroid is like something that uh, that is tangible proof that you know spirits can exist right well actually imdb lists uh, a little blurb that says that um there's an a, an ability called ninja apparently uh ninja and and it's a, it's a, a something that people talk about in spirit photography 
And it enables someone to burn images from their mind onto any solid surface just by thinking about it, uh, which can explain how spirits can affect videos and pictures. And it also can help explain why they appear in people's dreams and visions, you know, cause nightmares and that sort of thing. Yeah, and um, in Sadako's uh, little, like, description paragraph in Dead by Daylight, it's that it describes her as a vengeful ghost imbued of the power of Nensha. All right. So I, I want to look into that some more. Right. Very. It's it's fun, and uh, vengeful ghosts are a huge thing in in just in Japanese folklore and cinema, and you know the Grudge played off of the same idea, and I want to say Dark Water played off the same idea, but I barely remember that one. Um, but it's it's a big thing. <laughs> Alrighty. Yeah, there was a there was a Sadako versus uh, uh what's her name from the grudge? There was a ring versus grudge movie at some point. Right. Uh, well, I, I could see the that'd be a nice drag out fight right there. <laughs> <laughs> Supposedly they fuse. Like at some point, that was in the things I read. Uh, interesting. Like the like the both of their curses land on the same person, and like, they start fighting and somehow just meld together. Oh, you're talking about the Sadako uh, versus Ring versus Grudge, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Does that actually happen? Does anybody here know? I, I haven't seen it. I have seen it. In fact. Uh, we talked about it uh, some time ago uh, on uh, Delusions of Grandeur, and it was interesting. But um, I know that it didn't really have a great following um, over here, per se. But uh, but I, I, I realized that there was a little bit of a buzz because of it. So. Mm, okay. But yeah, there is kind of an infusing. Uh, but for some reason, the original Grudge movies, the Zhuan movies, uh, I always seem to laugh at those because the uh, the sound of the, uh, the Grudge spirit sounds exactly like a cat. So. The, the Grudge yeah. more, has more of a hopelessness feel to it. I mean, with this one, you can, once you understand the basis of it, you can get through the curse yeah here but uh there there is no beating that yeah, curse. You're, you're pretty much fucked <laughs> basically uh, there's a lot of hopelessness in that series but one day we'll cover that juan or what otherwise although i do have a soft spot for the grudge too uh something about the beginning where someone hits someone inside the head with a frying pan and it definitely kills them so <laughs> that's, um, that's that a <laughs> but um I guess is that everything? Are we? Uh... Uh, did you do your favorite? Because um, I think uh, I think yeah. we're done here. If you haven't, if you have. Yep. Yep. All righty. Like we're so, ready for uh, Hopefully, uh, yeah. you as an audience out there have enjoyed uh, Dustin's uh, uh, discussion on this uh, film. Yeah, it, it's, it's just great. Like I, I still can't. Don't have. Uh, well, other people have made the comparisons to the. Americanized ring because I haven't seen it. So uh, if you're if you're skeptical of Asian cinema, um, give this one at the very least a try. Like you'll probably enjoy it. I, I would bet. So I mean, yes, it is subtitled, which I know is like a major turnoff for some people, but it's 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 worth it. This isn't like a super dialogue heavy movie. Um, well, it kind of is, but. The dialogue isn't like really wordy. I guess is what I'm trying to say. Like it was, <laughs> right. I, I barely noticed the subtitles really in this. It was just, uh, it was easy to follow along with. So. Well, a lot of it could be thought of as pretty standard. As we said, it was as very heavy on the detective work, on the searching for clues, and I feel like the the basic story the basic plot should be familiar to most americans the pacing might be a little odd for people so that's different but otherwise 
I don't. I don't know. I've had a couple. I've had at least one teenager tell me that they watched the ring and they didn't understand why all these retro collectors were uh, seeing these ghosts. That you know, I mean, this would be better if they just would stream like everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I watch a lot of movie reactions, and some people are just so dumb and beyond belief. Like, wow. Yeah. <laughs> like, there are people who watch Texas Chainsaw Massacre. They see Jerry get, like, pulverized in the face with that hammer, and then they'll be like, oh, he got away, because he falls out of frame when he dies. And then some lover face, like, looks around the house uh, with other more. And some people sincerely believe Jerry got away, and lover face is trying to figure out where he went. <laughs> uh, on that note, I think uh, everyone. Uh, uh, yeah, I, should... think, uh, I think we all did a pretty good job. So uh, I'm gonna just uh, do my outro wheel real quick and then uh, head out. So anyway, okay. uh, I'm the Crypto Horrors. I have a YouTube channel for collecting horror movie stuff called the Crypto Horrors. Uh, I'm working on getting some more uploads made pretty soon. I also have an Instagram, the Crypto Horrors where I'm a bit more regular on posting. Uh, so we're hoping to eventually expand into a lot of reviews and some other fun stuff. So uh, yeah, go give us a follow. I'm also on Twitter as DirCryptaxis, uh, as long as it, you know, some people have been fleeing Twitter due to the recent uh, unpleasantness, but uh, I, have, I have said that I am, quote, going down with the ship. So I'm gonna be there till the bitter end. So, and, yeah. Your chance to reclaim the Crypt of Horrors title, just uh, pay that eight dollars. <laughs> I thought about it, but there's a lot of people just automatically blocking like everybody who does that, and I don't want to lose too many of my friends. So, also, it works so poorly that they actually disabled the ability to like do it. <laughs> <laughs> So you could you could you could buy the blue check mark for eight dollars for about a week and a half before they disabled it because there were too many problems, uh, and they fired like everybody who could like fix it. So I would no, I never used Twitter before, and I guess I'll never use it afterwards. So it works for me. Yeah, he he thought, um, oh, these people aren't important. Oh, these services don't do anything. So he like fired eighty percent of everybody who works there after he bought it. And a lot of the stuff he turned off was stuff that was actually important. For example, like two-factor authentic authentication for signing in. That was one of the things they shut off. So technically, 2FA does still work, except the service that sends you the text message so that you can you know, get your code to come back in, they shut that off. So if you use two-factor authentication, you can't log in now. Well, if you still if you still do Twitter, definitely follow that Twitter account. <laughs> yeah, dear Cryptax, it's it's a uh, it's a fun time. Anyway, I'm gonna go. Uh, yeah, bye guys. All righty, don't get to shut up. Right. Thank you. All righty, heading over to you, uh, Jake. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do? All right, I'm Kodabuki Jake. I'm the co-host of the YouTube channel, Septum Sam vs. the World, where we talk about physical media in all shapes and sizes and formats and what have you. And, uh, of course, do pickup videos, uh, anime discussions. We're talking Escaflone next week, and I still got a fair bit of watching left to get done on that. So Yeah, I've got to start. That looks good. Uh, you better start. Yeah, it's a long show. <laughs> but uh, we'll, uh, but it'll be interesting. Uh, of course, I spend a great deal of time at work, either at my full time job or working for RVA Homegrown Natives, uh, Native <laughs> Plant Nursery I've co founded. I uh, do try to make a good deal of time for viewing, it doesn't always work, but. Get a fair bit done, and uh, you know, I try to join these folks uh, at least weekly to, to talk about the movie du jour or what have you. And uh, definitely have enjoyed this week's uh, revisit. And uh, yeah, look forward to more in the future. And All righty. Well, uh, 
It's been a while, but I'm uh, Septim Sen, Septim Sen versus the world. Uh, we love physical media here on our channel. Um, we've been through quite a bit uh, as of late. Uh, and uh, I've got a couple of new things on the channel. Uh, we have uh, actually uh, Hardtail 666 Part 3, the cycle analysis just landed. So if you're a fan of the film or you really want to get a good handle on it before you buy it, uh, feel free to check that out. And um, I spent a lot of time on it, so I think it'll be a fun watch. As far as uh, just basic reviews, I've started a new type of show called First Impressions, where if I get something on physical media that I've never seen before and I watch it, I will give my first impressions of what's on the disc and uh, just uh, in general there. I also am a part of another channel to kind of shout out Mo uh, that Mo runs called Schlockaholics, which uh, we are a channel that dedicates ourselves to all that schlock. In there, uh, Mo has also done a couple of things like uh, uh, kiss discussions and a few other things that I'm not as uh, not as able to participate on. But we do our discussions. Uh, we had a recent discussion this past weekend on Manos, the Hands of Fate, which was a very fun one. And we also uh, did a uh, interview with uh, Joseph Vogley. Um, who worked on such films as uh, Thing 666, uh, Axe Grinder 3, uh, and uh, a lot of Joe Sherlock stuff like Dark Zone 13, 1 and 2, which I finally got to see. So I got to, I got to finally see where uh, Boris came from. <laughs> so that was kind of cool. And of course, last but not least, don't forget uh, to tune in next week for uh, Dustin's uh, last uh, plug before we move into Tammy's uh, month, which will be for Terrifier. I know I'll be uh, trying to prepare with uh, All Hallows Eve 1 and 2, but uh, that I'll be there. But I will, uh, I'll be there in spirit, if anything. Watch okay. the clown. <laughs> Alrighty. And uh, my name is David Streggy. I'm one of the founding fathers of Inside Movies Galore, so thank you for coming along with us on this fantabulous journey that we've been having. Um, we're almost done with, uh, with our five, uh, or our um, celebrating our five years of being here online. We have one more month uh, to go, uh, and I'm looking forward to, uh, to it. We've got Tammy in the ring. Uh, ring. Uh, uh, kind of funny, we, we just talked about a ring. Uh, but anyways, uh, <laughs> let us uh, uh, go into the uh, the fa uh, fact that uh, I also run a different channel uh, called Delusions of Grandeur, um, and we also podcast there uh, there on Sundays. And uh, if you get a chance, we talked about the very controversial uh, Song of the South this last Sunday, so check that uh, discussion out if you get a chance. And I also go on uh, about my own uh, thoughts on films and uh, uh, do some video pickups on the channel, so uh, also check those out when you get a chance. Although I haven't really done anything as of recent as far as reviews, I would like to get back into it and uh, hopefully get, get myself uh, back in tune with everything, but I do have uh, 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 some news that I've been sharing uh, each week. I am uh, putting together my first anthology. A lot of uh, the short films involved are ones that are uh, the ideas are by me, and I'm giving the direction behind uh, of how I want things to go. Uh, to go. And uh, uh, it's 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 becoming a fun project uh, because now we gotta get uh, get the trailer under a minute. So, Brandon, save us. But anyways, <laughs> I've got I got all the pieces. I just gotta put them together in the right order. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but um, yeah, um, there's a lot of uh, uh, people inv uh, involved uh, with uh, the anthology. It is called Tales of the Forgotten. Um, there are a lot of Wisconsin directors uh, that 
got involved with it. So I'm, I'm, I'm pleased. Um, so I, I, I get to do a little bit of local uh, stuff. Uh, uh, but um, in any case, um, hopefully you enjoyed our discussion. Like, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you next week here on Inside Movies Galore. So everyone say goodnight. Good night, everyone.